Hi guys, Hayes here. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today um, I'll be sharing my colour palettes for Procreate because a lot of you have asked me about that and before that I just want to say thank you for the overwhelming response for the previous tutorial and the brush pack. Thank you so much to everyone who donated to me. It really means a lot to me and it motivates me to create more videos and create more free resources for everyone. So, okay. Shall we jump into the files today? So today we will have a lot of files. So that's th these are all the swatches that uh, are available in this pack. And then at the end of it, there's also a sample file that you can open in Procreate. So once you have downloaded everything down, um, you can just go to the Dropbox and then hit export and copy to Procreate. And then this shall open the files in Procreate and then you will be able to see all of the files and then you will have this file this is the sample file so once you've loaded all your palettes this will this is what you will see you have the grayscale palette right at the top and then arranged by followed by the shadows mid tones highlights lip palette tint for highlights tint for shadows and tints so it's a lot of palette and today we have a lot to cover to learn how to use all these so um, let's get started as quick as possible and in this file there will be a couple of um, files here that we will discuss and you can also use them for reference in your future painting projects so we can jump right into our tutorial today let me just delete this since you guys already have it okay Okay, these are the working files for today. So, first thing first, let's talk about the the first uh, palette, which is the grayscale palette. So, if you notice here, the grayscale palette has three scales. So, one is black and white, and the other one is bluish, and the bottom one is brownish. So, you should think of the top one as a neutral scale, and the second one a cold scale and the bottom one a uh, warm scale you can actually use any of these when you are doing the gray scale it's up to you and there are other uses for this scale as well uh, which i will share probably in our tutorial because today's tutorial is really lengthy so let's jump right into the gray scale and talk about that a little bit so first thing first um okay this is the gray scale this is what you have and one being white and 10 being black and then there's about uh, 8 tones in between so this de uh, denotes the... let me just get a pen mm. okay this denotes the light oh my god okay like give me a layer okay this is light and then this is dark so this scale is called tonal values and you know that in every painting I do, I paint it all in black and white first. And some of you have complained like, why is that? Why is this process so lame and boring? And like, you see black and white just for the entire tutorial and I don't want to paint like that, yada yada yada. So today I'm just gonna answer that question first. So besides tonal value, we also have hue. So hue is the color, like what color? So this is color and we also have chroma. So chroma is chroma is the grayness of a color. So here being saturated and here is gray, total gray. So each time you paint a swatch like this, any swatch, it has three components which is tonal value, it has a value, it has a color, and it has a chroma. So you need to guess each three components accurately in order to have a successful and realistic painting. So it is not an easy task because first you have to guess the value. The value is probably four, I'm guessing, and then the color is probably between here, and then the chroma is probably somewhere in here. So, but these are all guesswork, and because there are three components, it's very easy to make a mistake when you're painting. 
because uh, it's just too many components that we have to worry about. So usually, mm, we all start and prioritize tonal values because this is the single most important thing. If these two, we happen to guess wrongly, but our tonal values are correct, we will still have a fairly successful painting. But if our values are wrong, it means that our painting will be wrong. So, um, and I've seen a lot of examples where you guys tag me in Instagram and then the problem that I see most is still the grayscale, the tonal values are wrong. So today we're gonna talk about that first and please don't skip this and don't think it's lame because today I'm actually covering a lot of things. First of all, we are gonna talk, we are gonna do the usual um, grayscale. So we're go gonna go to do this grayscale and then using the color palette, we will color it like any other uh, painting that I've been doing so far. And then we're also going to be uh, doing a color portrait using just the color palettes without doing any tonal values at all. Since you guys say that it was boring, right? So I have to show that I can, I'm able to do it. So right now, let's jump back to the grayscale. So grayscale is king, grayscale is important. Why is it important? Let me show you and explain to you. But before that, let me just undo all these marks on my... Okay, so... Let me just turn this off. Okay, right here we have two paintings which looks very spontaneous and colourful and has a lot of chroma changes and colour changes and we, are, and we probably thought that when this person paint this, they are doing it very fast, expressive but it's actually not, it's actually very calculated and very careful and the tonal values for these two paintings is actually impeccably controlled so let me show you a little magic if I just turn down oh, magic fail if I just turn down the colors and give you the grayscale you can see that the grayscale, the tonal values are actually correct and you can see the form and modeling of the object which the subject matter is actually very accurate and it's so when you get back the color it makes sense the whole portrait makes sense because the values are correct and this is why you always start your studies from grayscale because grayscale is that important okay the second thing that I want to talk about is okay look at this hue here let me ask you a question for for this yellow and this blue do you think that they have the same value because they actually don't and this is probably a one and then this is probably like an eight or a nine so how do we know uh, what values are the colors because every color has their own value like Green, green and orange are about five in the middle and then blue are always the darkest and then yellow is always the brightest so like Van Gogh said there can never be yellow without blue or blue without yellow because yellow is the color of light and blue is the color of uh, shadow so we need both to work and these are the easiest sample of light to dark in a color scale. So when it comes to uh, painting, we have to know like, like whatever color we put in exactly what value they are. And how do we check that is we take the grayscale. So this is why I uploaded the sample file. You can take the grayscale and put it onto the color scale and to guess the value of the colors. So let's say for example, um, okay, let's say for example this one, yeah, this one is pretty close, the blue with number four. And then, so this is how you should guess, but if you're like me, a bit blind, Everyone, I think, is struggling a bit in this. Um, the more saturated a color, the harder it is to guess the tonal value. 
So it's really hard for you to tell, really. But if you compare it with the chroma scale, suddenly it becomes a lot easier. So you, we can easily tell that it's a 5. It's closest to a 5, right? Yeah, so the whole scale is actually a 5. Because this scale just changes uh, chroma. It doesn't change its value, right? So this is how we can guess a color value. Um, you can just do a test. Turn on, turn on this one, and practice pulling the scale around to see what value they are, and then just figure out what values the colors are. The moment it starts to shimmer, it means that it is the same value. So let me demonstrate a little bit. It's a bit hard to explain this way. Okay. It's really hard to explain this way. Let me demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to pick something uh, neutral so that we can... We'll be able to see better. Okay, let's say I have this color, right? So I want to know what value is this. So let's move to a grayscale palette. So if it's look at look at uh, the color on top of two, it's obviously darker than two. Three, it's maybe darker than three. I'm not sure. Uh, it's maybe lighter than four. Definitely lighter than five. So it's probably a three or a four. So I'm guessing it's in between three and four. So I'm just going to try and adjust this to be a value 3 to demonstrate okay let's see if it's this color mm. yeah this is definitely a value 3 because you see when it's next to each other right the color starts to shimmer so this is this is not value 4 because it's still lighter it doesn't shimmer this is close already yeah. So, okay. It takes a while for you to kind of get it. This is a value 4. So, one quick trick to to know uh, the value, to quickly know the value, is to load this color, and I'm just going to load the four color into my palette so now I have this four right this is tone four I'm just gonna switch it to orange and drag it and then you look at the comparison on the top right corner of the two swatches the gray and the orange so this is definitely too dark so I'm just trying to match it that this is matched already this is too too light Okay, I've matched this already and I'm just trying to change saturation and match the value. So if you notice, the more saturated you go, the more color you see, the harder it is to match. So I'm just going to do something more neutral so that we can just see the difference. It takes some practice to see the shimmering. Yeah, so this is value 4. So this is how you can find out uh, values of a color, but the more saturated they are, the harder it is for you to tell. So, which is why you always start um, your portrait using grayscale. And let's talk. Let's open up all the other scales again. So, <clears throat> once again, to recap. This is a measure of light to dark, and this is a measure of color, and this is a measure of chroma, which is grayness, or as people call it, neutral tones. So the reason why portrait painting is so difficult is because skin is made of gray tones only. There's a lot and lots of gray on it. So if you see a sample here that I have, this is an orange chroma scale, and you can probably guess that um, right here is, is the skin tone, right? It's definitely not here. It's too, too saturated. So 
if when a, when a painting has too many grays, gray tones in them and very, very high chroma, it means that it's very difficult for us to gauge all three correctly. So, which is why we should always start with tonal values. And so the first demonstration would be to use a grayscale and how to improve your grayscale painting because I feel that a lot of you still have trouble doing that and we're going to improve that right now so let me just get rid of these scribbles turn all this off and bring up our first uh, exercise okay So here is what I want you guys to do. Pick any portrait, sketch it, and then reduce the size, um, duplicate it three times so that you have three copies. Duplicate it twice so that you have three copies. Okay, now I have three copies. And this is what I want um, you guys to do. Looking at the portrait, using your grayscale palette, we are going to guess the value and pin them in, in without blending. So just plain painting, blocky style. And we're gonna guess the value so I'm gonna start first and just uh, put in what I know what I can definitely confirm which is the hair is you know, uh, all the way black so, so when you're stuck in a painting it's always a good idea to put in what you know first and what you can confirm this will really help a lot. Okay, I've put in black now. And I'm just gonna go lighter one shade and guess the rest of the painting values by looking at the color, color photo. Okay, still blocky style, nothing too fancy. So I'm just moving one tone to the next, um, guessing the tonal values. So you can actually complete uh, a painting using just four values. You don't have to use all ten. It's not necessary to be so detailed. So right now it's just guesswork. And you'll see the point of this exercise later on. It doesn't matter if you think that it's wrong, it's a exploration process. Just just do this uh, exercise with me here and you will not regret it. But remember to go like one tone to the next and don't jump. If you jump, it's going to be very difficult for you to predict where your tones end up. Okay, now I'm gonna go one more tone. Okay, I think I'm done. So, now what I want you to do is to um, change this okay so let me just put a note okay this is from color photo we're gonna redo this from a black and white photo so I know that when we turn turn this on 
when it becomes grayscale and then we look at the one that we painted and then we realize oh my god a lot of mistakes yes but that's that's not the point so what we need to do is do the version based on the black and white so I'm just gonna duplicate the one I have because I'm lazy that way and modify from here So if you already uh, notice, you will realize that the uh, skin has very very little uh, changes in values. It's mostly just the same value, even though it looks like it's a different value. So um, it's actually the same damn value. Okay, um, I know that this area here in the cheek is a bit too light but I'm not going to change it because it's actually in between tones. So this is uh, tone 3 and the skin is tone 4. Yeah, so it's actually in between tones. So I'm not going to change that, I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, right now Here's what we're gonna do now that we've finished the black and white photo version of it. You might take longer depending on how much mistakes you make in the first one. But um, we should get started on the last one. So this is where everything gets interesting. Okay, just bring that over. So there we go. There we go. I'm going to copy this painting, this photo, sorry. And we are going to paste it here. We are also going to put a scale on top of it. Okay, so now I have my scale. So here's what we need to do. We are going to double check every single tone we put down. So if you find that this version and this version doesn't have much difference it means that your eye has improved but anyway let's just go ahead with it and check the hair okay the hair is a complete black which is correct and mine is complete black and then my highlights is an 8 right here so you can see it's an 8 here I'm just gonna check that if it's an 8 Yes, it's an 8, but it also has a 5. It also has a 5. Mm. Okay, it has a 5. Which is interesting, because I would have never guessed that. So it has a 5. Okay, got 5. And let's check the rest. The highlights here should be an 8 with a 6. Okay, a 6. Mm. Okay, some 6. Probably here too. And here, I think it's a 6. Don't think, check. Mm. Okay, seems like this entire area is a 7. 7 and 8 so just gonna adjust that you might be surprised at the mistakes you find sometimes you would never expect at all then the ear okay it's a 9 and the highlights are a 5 9 and 5 okay let's see Nine and one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, perfect. Five. Okay. The, the more you do this stage, which is using a scale and checking all the values, the quicker you improve. You improve really, really quick if you do it this way. Okay, now let's go to the neck. Mm. Neck is a nine. Nine and 
9 and between 6 and 7 so I'm just going to use a 7 and a 9 it doesn't matter if it's between tones it really doesn't matter oh, turns out I'm correct mm, just need this a little bit okay, uh, checking the rest of the neck neck is a 5 is this a 5? yep, correct and so now okay now let's check the hands hands are a three three and four yep it's all three and fours so let's see if i got them correct yep correct no fives so i just gotta take out the five and gonna check the nails so I'm just doing a really really quick uh, sketch here, right? To for teaching purposes, you can please take your time with this when you're doing this. Try and really study and understand uh, the tonal changes. Okay, let's go to the skin. The skin is a four. I got it correctly. Mm hmm and there's a 5 here interesting so I guess the skin tone correctly but apparently it's also a 5 here which means my first one was actually correct it was just blended so couldn't really tell and let's see it's 5 then it becomes 4 again it's a 6 I'm just going to do this check until I'm done. Okay, um, turns out I made a few mistakes. The lips is between 4 and 5, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, just going to finish up with the eyes. Wow, the eyes of 4, would never have guessed that. Okay, I'm just putting the values at the correct places. Not thinking a lot. Not thinking a lot at all. Okay, let's just put it down here. Yeah, move. Move things where they need to be. Okay, um... Okay, we have three grayscale here, your practices, and from here, you can roughly gauge the mistakes you make and analyze the mistakes you make, and then in the next portrait you do, don't repeat the same mistakes. Like, for me, I tend to put a lot more highlights than there is, so they are wrong. And then I also put a lot more shadow than it is when I'm comparing to the color photo which means I need to practice more um, in checking all my tones when I do my color photo painting from color photo but from the black and white I'm actually pretty accurate so it's just a little bit more contrast needed in other places which I will probably find out once I start putting in color so using the check version, we can actually uh, identify all the mistakes that we make and try and catch our pattern of making those mistakes and avoid making the same mistakes again. So do this exercise and let me know, let me see the differences that you guys have for this exercise which will be quite interesting because you'll be like really like eye-opening, you know, when you do it. So right now, let's just... um. Bring everything together. Mm. Okay, so we are just gonna smudge everything out and just to show us how everything looks like when it's all done and look at the differences between all the three uh, photo again. Okay, smudge brush. I'm just pushing tones because um, there are some areas that we do the in-between tones and we just pick one over the other so we need to remember those areas and smudge out 
those areas definitely so okay that's one done let's do the other one Having less tonal values may not be a bad thing because it, it, the portrait will turn out looking cleaner Less messy But portrait is generally a very very uh, low contrast painting which means it has very subtle tonal value changes within a very small range of values like maybe between 3 and 4 and a lot of changes between 3 and 4 and that is why it's not easy because especially using a traditional medium you can very easily change the value of the paint every time you put down a paint so not much difference actually mm. okay the color one will be huge difference but if you want to improve so you should always start off um, doing the color photo and then after that uh, doing the check one instead of doing the black and white one but you should always end with a check then that way you can improve a lot faster because you get to understand the way you make mistakes a lot more so because a big beginners usually tend to put in way too many values in the portrait when there's only a very few values very very few values so I'm also susceptible to that Okay, so I've blended out all three of them and Well, you can see for yourself the difference um, The first one, the color photo one really has too many values going on So we have to identify the areas where we make these kind of mistakes and avoid them next time because we can't have too much contrast going on with values in the portrait it's really not how a portrait works so this is the way to improve your grayscale painting and that marks the end of this chapter and we should move on to the next one so after cleaning up the grayscale and blending and blending and smudging we have this base now and we are going to use the color palette to color this um, grayscale so if you look at the color palette that I have, I have shadows, mid-tones and highlights. It doesn't really matter which one you use if you use this method. But I suggest that you start with mid-tones. So let's just revert this. Okay, using the saturation brush. You can download this brush pad from my previous video. You can go there and get the link and download the brush from there. So using this saturation brush, you can pick the color that you think represent the skin tone. Usually it's some form of an orange. If you can't tell the color after you pick it, um, you can use the highlights or the shadows depending. It doesn't really matter because both will give you the same result. So just pick a color that you think uh, would give you the color that represents the skin tone and just give this a uh, one all I'm just going to redo this um, lighter remember to turn on the alpha channel before you do this okay once I have this like base tone um, we can then focus on the areas that need more reds like the ears but be careful because they are very strong if you find that they're too strong you can swap to the uh, to the mid-tones one they're exactly the same color just darker so if you've picked the third one uh, from the highlights you can pick the third one from the mid-tones it's the same it's just less uh, intense so it, the chroma is a bit uh, dull like you see this is more gray than the highlights one and if you use this to do the base coat then you will have like a very very slight tinge of um, skin tone compared to the one that you use if you use highlights and if of course the top uh, level here is the one that is the most grey so the middle one is less 
and then this one is slightly more saturated so of course uh, the bottom one in the highlights is the most saturated of them all so you just play around and find a color that uh, you feel like represent your skin tone and then we can move on so try to use the ones from the mid-tone palette because they are less intense so they are easier to control so you see I'm having uh, better results using the ones than the color from the mid-tone palette remember to keep your brush big so that you don't have um, splotchy results once you have this one all it's good to um, good to put in some reds so first we put in the orange now we should put in some reds um, so there's plenty of reds for you to choose from if the color doesn't work just move move your color okay this is good if you're using from the highlights palette please be a bit mindful about your pressure because these colors are very very intense so when they're intense they can be really strong if not you're not used to this stick to the mid-tones and only go to the highlights when um, you have ran out of colors okay I'm doing the eyes and I realized that this is not the color that I have so I can just scroll down and look at tints so tints um, they have every color here that you can just quickly choose which is very convenient for coloring things like eyes I realized that my drawing on the left eye is wrong so I'm gonna have to change it before I proceed or else the whole painting would not work okay just give it a good smudge and, and we're ready to go back into coloring And of course, we should put some reds on the nose. If you find that it's a bit too purple or pinkish, you should go back towards orange, the direction of orange. I will cover more about the skin color and the theory uh, later on in this tutorial. You will still get to see it. So don't worry. Because this is um, the usual way that I paint and I like to cover this aspect first. Okay, for the eyebrow, we're just going to tint it, but uh, using shadows, we're just going to tint it uh, maroon and see if it works. Yeah, it works, but we have to be, have a very light touch with this. So remember that when you're coloring, you need to have a very, very light touch. Okay, now for the lips. I have this lip palette that is really convenient for you. So let's just try a salmon color. The salmon color is the most common for lips and most likely it's gonna work. There we go, it works. Just give it a, a base color first before you judge and see if the color is correct. So the upper lip should be a little bit more gray. So we can pick a slightly grayer color. So you see this color palette has um, three sets. So the one to the left is a bit more saturated and the one in the center is a bit more subdued and chroma and neutral. So the one to the right is highlights. So just now I pick uh, this color and we're just, we're just gonna pick back the same color but the chroma version for the top lip because the top lip is a lot grayer. The top lip is also a lot more uh, orange so we're just gonna adjust that. Yeah, and boy, for the bottom uh, red, we're gonna go a little bit darker. Mm, let's try this one. No, it has to be this red. So, okay. you can also use tints if you ran out of tones. But I guarantee you, using my color palette, you will be able to finish a portrait. So you can use burn and uh, 
burn some reds in. Alright. Sometimes you think that the colour that you pick will give you like orange but some, and then it comes out like magenta then you know you have to go towards the yellow uh, colour. Um, for the teeth, I usually use um, bluish or greyish tones so we can get that in the mid-tones um, blue section, the left part which are all the neutrals and then the highlights also have some blues for you to pick from so we can just try and see which one works. We want to give the impression that the teeth is uh, white so it needs to have a cold color to it something like grey or blue. It can't be brown. If it's brown it will look uh, like the teeth is yellow. So this blue is also good for highlights and the eye white. So we can use this for the eye white to make it a to make things look white. So you see very simple. Really really very simple to color in your portrait with the palette that I've included. So don't forget the tear ducts. Mm. Just mix and match colors. It's really fun. You can also burn using the color. Okay, if you want to burn, I've prepared a special palette. If you look here, I have this palette called Tins for Shadows. So these are really, really light tins that you can use to burn. So I'm using this, I'm just gonna use this to burn. Um, there. I'm get, gonna get the right size, okay. And then just pick the color that you want. Mm. They're all very very subtle tones. So they're perfect for like burning if you realize that you need a sh tiny shade darker. And then if you realize that you've done it a little bit too uh, saturated, you can always use the grayscale to burn it instead. Either way, it works. Oh god. So for highlights, it's usually in a blue tone or a yellow tone. So if you see my highlight palette, there's already a convenient yellow color here that you can use for highlights. Okay, now we can um, kind of put in the details already once you have the colors done. You can always use the grayscale to make things more gray if you need to, like I'm doing to the hair or to the eyebrow. So you can make use of the palette. Very easy to do. So, well, it's almost done. We, all we need to do is to put in all our effects. So let's just quickly um, put them in. So first, I'm just gonna um, let's see, put in some highlights. Um, I can use my highlight palette or tints for shadow if I need a colors for highlights. So they're all conveniently here for you. So I'm just putting down some textures for the highlight areas. For the forehead, real easy to use for the finger. Okay, um, next, I can put in some raising our uh, freckles using any color, maybe from the shadow palette, it would be good. Uh, okay, mid tones would be good as well. Just gonna enlarge this. More random effect. Mm, I can also manually um, put some manually paint them on. Okay. Once we have that, we can um, do some effects. So picking the blue. Just remember you can download uh, this brush pack from my previous tutorial or from my Gumroad account. Some textures. It's 
so using the confetti brush um, for all the for all the effects I can actually use tin for shadows or just plain tints you can also use tin for highlights tins for highlights are a lot easier to use when you come to you doing highlights because this is actually mapped out according to the color changes already so you find that um, it's more predictable when you use tints for highlights instead of tins just gonna sketch on some manual highlights again that you can choose the color of the highlight that you want it's really convenient put in where's my hessian brush just setting up the uh, texture for the highlights uh, change the color for the lips highlight so that it's more natural and then for lips I can either use the lip palette or another one but I'm just gonna try using this highlight okay it's a bit too pink so let's go back to the salmon one yep it's perfect for the top one we can probably try the pinker version yep looks better for the top and of course we can put in some tighter highlights so for shimmers and glitters we can use tints for highlights and have a better result compared to using white because they have a color value to them so it's not totally white if you look at the brown area here you can see it's a blue so this adds to the realism you can use a mixture of the confetti and the shimmer brush the shimmer brush is a more random approach the confetti is a more um, predictable approach when you use the brush it appears exactly where you want it to but then the shimmer one is a lot more random you see it's like going everywhere so you can use the shimmer if you are doing things like for uh, the cheek it's good because you don't want it to go exactly where you're going to put it So if you notice, I've been having some trouble keeping the uh, skin uh, gradients clean and smooth. Well, that's because remember just now when we were doing the exercises with the gray scale. So I just blended that version there instead of reworking it because usually when I put down the tonal values for the grayscale drawing I usually use the uh, airbrush, this brush so that really helps and it. I use them in a very very large size so I don't have any uh, marks that I don't want so right now I have a lot of like smudge marks everywhere which is really hard to get rid of so for the exercises you can use the blocks but if you can please use this uh, airbrush when you are toning your your um, portrait because your portrait needs to have like a balance of uh, soft edges and hard edges if you want to know more you can always watch my other tutorials so I'm, I'm just like trying to get rid of all the artifacts from the exercise just now and yet I'm like stubborn and don't want to uh, redo the portrait so we can pull on the highlights and use some um, tints for highlights if you want or if you just want white you can just use the uh, where is it the, the grays here So right now I'm just going to make a new layer um, 
for the eyes before that I just want to darken the pupil okay on to the new layer uh, where are my brushes yeah for the base so I'm just gonna pick a color from the tin uh, maybe this color and I'm going to drop the intensity a bit scale it and then adjust the position a little bit back to the and then another new layer this time I'll use the pupil center with a really light color and I want this to be a lot more intense so I'm going to duplicate this maybe three times and I'm going to merge down okay uh, now for the final one now layer mm. pupil pipe actually I think I'm going to swap the first layer to be black and I'm just going to recolor it there probably okay black this and then last layer pupil pipe okay let's try this not bad okay uh, now we're just gonna erase um, the top part so I'm just gonna smudge up um, because it's too dark the edge okay I'm gonna merge them all and gonna burn the top a little bit and now we can put our highlights in okay now we're just gonna do the uh, lashes and once we do the lashes we're just gonna do the uh, reflections of the lashes but we will swap the color and then we're gonna do the same for the other side Okay, then we're gonna just do the reflections again. So I'm just gonna use the tints for shadow to burn the portrait a little bit. And I'm gonna put more freckles. So these are just some simple mods that you can do. Um, if you go into pencil for the pressure if you just increase the size then you will be able to control the the size of the stroke just some of the mods that you can do to the brushes I'll be going a lot more in depth uh, with the brushes that I've uploaded before so the next few tutorial will be about the brushes again and the upcoming video I will be focusing on the sketch brush and how and a couple of exercises we can do with the sketch brush to improve your uh, technique okay this is fine already but then it's still very patchy because of um, the way it was done in grayscale earlier on for the exercise so if you want to avoid the same uh, misshap, you can use the soft brush when you are not practicing your grayscale. The airbrush, uh, which is this one, yeah, can use this to do the tonal values instead. Use them as big as possible for the size. Okay, so this portrait is uh, complete already, and this is using the this is using the gray scale to color method so this is the first method and now we're gonna go into just um, really really uh, fully utilizing uh, 
uh, the palette here for our second method which we will be painting a la prima style which means that we would just try and guess uh, the values and the chromas and the color at the same time as much as possible and try to use as this uh, palette as much as we can so before so in order to properly um, in order to properly guess all three values we would need to in order to guess like three of these um, accurately we will need to have a good sense of theory on the skin tone so as I mentioned before the skin tone basically lies here where this is the most saturated so this is the most saturated and this is grey so it's about in the middle and from the exercise that we did earlier on right from the exercise that we did earlier on with all these exercises so we what, what did we learn we learned that um, the portrait actually has very very little values but the color actually changes a lot so when when it comes to color changes there is this thing called modulation so if we look at this color scale here let me just enlarge this if you look at this color scale here uh, my god yeah if you look at this color scale here oh my god yeah from here to this end we can see that um, it's changing in value all the time so like this is probably a 5 then it drops down to a 1 and then it goes back up to a 5 and a 6 and then it slowly goes up to an 8 and then after that it goes back to like a, a 6 something like that so it changes value all the time so if we paint this it will be a mess because the values change all the time and you can just check it uh, sometimes you think that you can be smart and reduce the saturation to see what's going on but there are certain colors that uh, you can only detect the value by your eye so you, you always still have to rely on your eye so in this way uh, the first um, practice that we need to make is learn how to modulate hues this is a modulation of the same scale but the difference is this is all this is all in the same value they are all in the same value then when you go when you zoom out you can see it starts to shimmer together because they are the same value that's why they are behaving that way and this one as well so when you zoom out you can see that it's almost disappearing so this is a way to change color without changing the value and you need to master this skill to perfection if you want to be able to paint direct, do a direct painting method so let's just do some exercises um, okay do some exercises um, okay uh, what color do I have now let's see okay I have this color now right let's just try and change this to purple without changing the value so I'm not talking about chroma right now, we don't really care about the chroma. The chroma can be grey, can be saturated, we don't really care. We just want to try our hand and matching values. So right now here, we can see at the top right corner where I'm clicking, it's two shades of the same colour. And if I shift this to purple, you can see the right side is changing to purple. So we can use this uh, handy tool, left and right swatch, to gauge the value of the hue that we want to modulate so let's try and match the value of the pink so this is definitely too too light this is still too light this is definitely getting darker already so there is a middle point here okay that where you see that it starts to shimmer but then here it starts to get lighter and then darker so it's in between here and this is probably the the sweet spot this is the sweet spot that we want so if you can't tell you can try dropping the uh, chroma 
That means increasing the chroma of it. Increase or drop? I can't remember. But anyway, you can just make it more grey. Let's just make it more grey. Right now, I have um, to the, the same swatch of the pink. Let's just change this to grey without changing the value. So if I go towards here, it's definitely lighter. Or here is dark. I'm just trying to go greyer without changing the value. Which means I'm pushing towards the left. Okay, this should be the same color. Yeah, you see it disappears, you see. When I blend this, I can't see the edge at all. So it's a really, really close match. So let's try and get the same purple in this uh, to, be, to be the same value. Okay, this would be it. And you see it, you can also blend in between the purples. So let's just try and blend them together and see what happens. So you can see that they all just like float into each other very seamlessly. And this is how you modulate a hue, which means that um, you change colors, but it's the same value. It can be a different chroma as well. So this is how you do it and you need to be able to, to achieve um, this practice before you can even try to attempt a direct painting method. So if you can do this already, then you know that you can modulate any hue you want. And then we can talk about um, skin modulation. So right here, okay. let's try not to glitch my iPad again. Okay. okay, right here I have, um, okay, let me just adjust this a little bit, okay, so right here I have red to orange, okay, so this is a hue modulation, same value, same value, or this whole strip is the same value, you can see it vibrates same value and then from here onwards it becomes grey so this is just a hue modulation and this is a chroma modulation and believe me that with just this same scale you can paint a portrait using just these few colors you can really paint a portrait so let me just prove that to you um, okay, here I have the exact same colors from the scale. I have the exact same colors from the scale modulated. So I'm just gonna go through them really, really quickly. Uh, so for the highlights, damn it, glitch, glitch, glitch. So let me just erase. No, let me just. Uh huh. Now we can see everything. Okay. Okay, we all know that simplest fact um, the cheeks are red the lips are red correct okay. the lips are red and then the nose has a bit of red but it's generally orange so everything else is also orange you always start with an orange base always always it's an orange base and then here it gets more red maybe or or just uh, slightly towards red so maybe you call it orange red Okay, and then for the highlights, it's usually in the grey tones, okay, so grey tones, because grey tones make it cold and when it comes to light, to shadow, right, so here is grey or yellow or blue, because this is cold, going to warm, so the shadow is red or brown orange red this is typically a skin color right so if if you notice the zones of the coloring it will help you a lot when you do the grayscale method as well because you know where to put each color you always start with an orange base and then after that you go in with the reds then the grays or the yellows so the grays goes here and also the top part of the lip is a little bit more gray so we you need to memorize these zones 
or else you will not be able to uh, do direct painting because you need to know the temperature changes on the faces. So let's proceed. Okay, now that we have the the heel modulation, we can then just uh, dump in our uh, shadows and highlights. So let me just dump in my shadows. So these are my shadows. I'm just having shadows to define the nose, the eyes, the eyelids, and around the face a little bit. So I'm just flashing back for you to see. And the top lip as well to define the chin. Very simple, just brown tone. This is just a brown or orange red tone that I'm using to add the shadow. And if I just move this away, so this is what I have. It's as simple as that. And then we have the tones uh, for the highlights. This is the highlights and where they go. So they are on the cheek here. Always a triangle. Sorry, let me draw the triangle properly. A triangle here. And then here with the T-zone. With the T-zone. And then here. For the soft highlights. These are the soft highlights. And then of course for the hard edge highlights, we have all the um, flicks on the eyes and the eyebrows, the nose and the mouth, etc, etc and other, any other effects that you want to put so once we have this, all we need to do is just a line art so this is just the line art to finish off everything this is as simple as it gets for a portrait and now with the palette I've given you Let's just talk about the shadows palette. The shadows palette is basically just a modulation of like uh, purple to, to yellow. It's actually just red to yellow. This is just this is not green. This is this is actually uh, this is not green at all. Yeah. So this is actually a gray yellow. So it's yellow going to gray. Okay. You will very seldom use this color unless there's some like special effects. So and then in the middle strip here are the uh, less intense versions of the ones on top so they are more grey and they are so essentially they are easier to use so we always try to use the grey version before going to the most uh, saturated version and then the bottom part the bottom layer is more saturated it's a more saturated version same same colors same hue just more saturated. It's just a chroma variations here, yeah. And then uh, to the to the right we have this this same four hues, one, two, three, four. And then this is the same four, but lighter and reduced intensity. Okay. So this is the trinity of all the this is a collection of all the shadows that you will ever need. And then when it comes to the mid-tones, just the right part is enough for you to color your entire face and then the left part is just if you need like additional gray tones uh, to cut to for your shadow areas because sometimes you have unique lighting conditions so we have a purple uh, modulating all the way to uh, green so it's really convenient for you is all there but what you need is usually just all on the right side because you can see that on the top one is a grey version then the last grey and then a saturated version everything you need is right here it's the same colour as the one uh, that is on in this scale and then in the highlights it's the same colours but you can see that they are not modulated properly um, it doesn't really matter it, you can try, you can uh, spend your time to modulate all these uh, colours properly so that they are exactly the same uh, value but then sometimes when they are same value like this it's hard to tell them apart because they start shimmering right before your eyes so it's good to have some delineations like this sometimes and the left side is again are the same grey tones that we use that is the same as the mid tones they are just uh, more saturated and lighter to use for your highlights for direct painting method and of course your lip palette because lips uh, can be a bit purplish to red so we have the modulation from purple to red and orange and then so these are the uh, shadows and then the center ones are the 
are the mid-tones which means they are grey and then the highlights are the light ones so this is all you have ever need for your um, direct painting method and then the tints for highlights, tints for shadows and tints you can use them for your special effects for your highlight shadows and for any if you mess up and then you can just adjust the, val adjust the colors again or the value again so Okay, more theory. Uh, do we need more theory? Let me see. Okay, this is a general rule. Mm. Okay, one, one last theory to, to go through before we proceed. Okay, if you notice, right, the shadows are usually the most saturated. They are very seldom grey unless um, it's a uh, object shadow, so we are not talking about object shadow, we are talking about cast shadows. They are usually, usually more saturated. And then when it comes to the mid-tones, which is generally um, without the... Yeah, these are the mid-tones, the rest here. Mid-tones, mid-tones, mid-tones. Okay, these are shadows. So for the mid-tones, they are the most difficult to handle because they have the most greys. Okay. And then for the highlights, they are very difficult to paint uh, in traditional method, like in ways of like if you paint acrylic or oil painting, because they are the lightest, and they also they still have a color value to them. They still have color, so in a way it's hard to retain the color property when you paint traditionally. But when it's in digital, you can see here. You can see here, let me see. Okay, this is definitely... Oh my god, it's so big. This is white, right? You can see this is white. But right next to the highlight are usually a very, very saturated light colour. So, and this is the colour that is like really, really difficult to get when you are painting traditionally to get the same effect. So, if you... Let's say... Uh, okay. What if you take away... The saturated part and you just use white right so let's just do this okay i'm desaturating the highlight okay you can see it doesn't work anymore it becomes like a cave instead so you if you have just compare this and this you can see the difference it needs to be really really vibrant and saturated around the highlight and this is a really difficult thing to get if you're painting traditionally but thank god you're painting digitally right so but you need to understand the theory of all these before you proceed so without further ado we shall go ahead with our second um, portrait so I'm, not, I'm just gonna share with you uh, this method the direct painting method and if you do if you choose to do this method you are going in for a really really long difficult painful journey and not you won't be able to improve necessarily if you keep proceeding in this method yeah but this is the method if and this is the method that masters use if they are really really good at it i can't say that i'm particularly good at it but i'm okay with doing this because i still have to paint traditionally in this method sometimes so this is the paint, the... This will be the portrait that we'll be painting today. And this is how you're gonna do it. So this is the sketch that I have and I am just gonna paint on it. Let me just organize myself. Okay. So the first thing we do is we, we know that um, we can only paint the correct tone or value or chroma once we have something to base them off which means we need an initial color and this first color that you put in is really really important because it needs to be correct for all three chroma hue and value and we need to nail this now so i'm just gonna do the mid tones for the face and i need to get this color absolutely spot on so that i can proceed with the rest so I'm just dumping in colors to check to see how the hue that I want to go for and I've decided to go in fact I haven't decided at all okay I'm just gonna go with this neutral brown 
because I feel that it represents the color of this painting. Actually, no, it doesn't. So, figuring out the first patch of color is the most difficult. So, I just chose a more saturated version of the tone that I was using just now. And I'm just blocking in so that I have a base to reference to when I put my next few colors. The first goal of this painting method is to get the first four colors absolutely correct. That is what we need to do. And if you get them wrong, everything will be wrong from then onwards. Okay, I have my base. Just gonna turn the alpha lock on. And now I'm gonna get a color to represent the hair. So I'm gonna pick something from the shadow palette. I'm just trying the color and trying to get one that I think is correct, which I think is this one. So you always have to try to go grayer. Don't use the saturated version as much as you can. Try to resist the urge. Once you found the color in the saturated version, drop down to a grayer tone. Don't use the saturated version. Okay, so now I have the hair. And now I'm going to find a representation of um, the mid-tones for the hair. So I'm just going to guess again. This is hard. Okay, this looks like it, but it seems like it's a bit too light. This is the color. So I'm just going to put them down. Uh, I'm just going to use a light touch to put down the tones. Always remember that if your value is correct, you will have a successful painting. So our goal is always to get the correct uh, values, but now we are in the four color blocking stage. Okay, now I have the representation uh, tone for my mid-tone for my hair, I'm going to do the same for the face. Completely wrong. Okay, this is the correct colour, which is this colour. Okay, the rest are just too saturated. So I'm going to use this colour, but I need to drop down the value, because it's too bright. What happened? And I'm going to drop down the chroma as well, but then when I dropped it down, it looks like it's the wrong colour. So I'm going to push it red and see I think I'm just gonna go back a bit yeah yeah I think this is the color um, so let's just lock that in I'm not gonna bother much with the neck because it's a completely different color co compared to the face okay using this just this uh, four colors we are going to paint some sort of a value painting first before we even do anything else, okay? So, I'm just gonna start with the hair Picking colour from the four colours that I already chose I'm not gonna pick any new colours or anything anymore I'm just focusing on this, these four colours And I'm working really really big So, what that means is I don't care about the details, I just want to model the shape of the face and make sure I can see like the neck is a cylinder. That's the most important thing. I'm not worried about anything else. The color is off, but it doesn't matter at this point. This method will not work with traditional painting. Okay, the neck's done. Just gonna do the forehead. We need to get the values correct before we proceed. So to everyone who said that painting in grayscale is boring, give this a try. Because there's nothing worse than spending hours on a painting and then it turns out like shit. Just trying to blend as smooth as I can. Because this is like a really really early stage. So here are the things that um, we will not do. 
we will not use the uh, we will try to not use the saturation tool because that would be cheating because we are trying to do a direct painting method but if you ask me I feel like using it now maybe we will use it I mean digital painting is supposed to make life easier right so right now we're gonna do the shadows so for the shadows there's very limited color so the chances of us getting it wrong is very low so let's turn off the uh, alpha channel Hello. so just we are just worrying about the darkest darks and nothing else Once we put down the colour, we can instantly tell if it's wrong or correct and we can make the necessary adjustments. We're going to proceed in this manner, slowly, slowly um, and confidently put every stroke down, um, make sure it's the correct colour and value and chroma. Three items, yes. Okay, now we can use some fancy brush. And now, if you look here, we can tell that um, this entire net is a different color. So, we're gonna do a bit of cheating and modify it using the uh, saturation tool. Turn on alpha before that. There is a bit more yellow compared to the tone before, and it's a bit redder at the part where the shadow meets the mid tone. So we're just gonna put that in, and also we're gonna cheat by using the burn tool. So quickly we have already established like um, the neck and for the highlights of the neck um, I'm just going to use the uh, dodge tool and see if we can get the correct colour Okay, this is wrong color but it doesn't matter we can change it let's just get the value correct for now okay the value should be right but let's change the color again it should be a little bit redder so we'll make it bigger okay so this is the color of the neck okay that's good so next uh, we're gonna focus on the ear Start again with the uh, shadow. Or if you want to call it line work, it's the same. Once we have the darker stocks, uh, we can start to guess the next tone. And I'm just going to make a guess. Okay, it needs to be a lot more orange than this. Let's see, this is the color. Okay, a little bit more red than this darker okay okay almost there okay this is the color that we are looking for and the almost the correct um value and chroma it will pass Okay, let's erase the line so we can see better. Okay, uh, now we can just gonna adjust the line color. It needs to be a lot more orange, so I'm just gonna use saturation brush. Yeah, 
yeah that's about it and then I'm just gonna pick the highlights and roughly paint it in so that I have a something to work with so this method is basically just second guessing um, colors and chroma values and uh, if we get it wrong we're just going to adjust them with the saturation tool so think of like just simply using wrong colors and like or cool mask and hopefully one day you get it right and until then we're gonna have to keep adjusting our colors so when we have suddenly too much uh, contrast we know that we change value too drastically and we need to bring it down a notch so that it's not patchy but it's really hard to adjust when you're picking colors blindly okay we almost have um, the shape but of course the colors all wrong so let's just adjust the colors of those that was wrong It looks a lot more reasonable now, so we can proceed, I think, mm, to lining in the edge of the face. And at this point, we just want to um, do the darker stacks on the face. So we just start with um, the edge of the face. And erasing as we go. We just have to remember to keep um, the shading as clean as possible. And we have to know that it's not going to be as accurate as the grayscale one But everything is a learning process So now um, to the forehead I'm going to Use the airbrush and Drop in some color At the edge Then I'm going to Change the color a bit Just gonna ever so slightly burn it. And we're just gonna leave it at that for now. Next, we're gonna work on the eyebrows. I want to use this color, but I want it to be a lot grayer, so I'm just gonna push it gray. Use the hairbrush for quicker. Okay, switch back to the sketch brush and I'm just gonna erase this part so that we can see better okay, for the next area okay we have our eyebrows now we should um, do the nose so we're just gonna start with a red um, the darkest red and we're gonna redefine the nostril modify some colors around it because it will be a lot redder around the nostril can pick a lighter version for the rest of the shadows
Okay, now that we have cleaned up the lines, we can go ahead and erase the first line. Okay, now we can def begin to define the nose. Fixing some of the values around the area before we proceed. Okay, I'm just going to use the uh, burn tool, same color, just to get the values right. I'm sweating so much, it's causing like my taps to pain instead of undoing. Okay, now we're just going to dodge and get the values correct. I don't really care much about the color right now. It's not my concern. I'm just worried about the values because values are king. So once we have um, something like this, we can go ahead and blend, move things around. And then we can go ahead and do our colouring. Um, let's try and get the colour correct. Okay, I know it's a bit red around the nose and slightly less red at the bottom. Okay, we can see some funny things happening here. This is typically what happens when um, the tonal values are jumping too much. So we see patches, light and dark patches, so especially this area here. So when we do use burn, we have to be careful because sometimes the result can be a bit much. Okay, it looks much better. So now we can go ahead and uh, try and redefine this a bit more. By picking colors, I'm just going to pick the colors and uh, give this kind of like a bit more definition. I'm going to work on some hard edges. But picking the colors that we already have, um, we can easily use that to color the rest of the skin but again we still have to be very mindful about what values are, what values we are adding to the painting we can also begin to um, shade the eye It's as simple as um, changing the colors once we are done with um, the values. So the base of the eye is done and I can just use this to continue burning shades onto the eyelid. And then we can start modulating the tones. So it turns to red. Oh my god, I did it on the wrong layer. No wonder I was having such a hard time. So let's do that again. Aha, uh -huh. now it works. So again, uh, we can start modulating the tones. So what I do is change this color to a bit red. Also throw on a highlight here. Slightly lighter. Yep. It's actually much easier in when you're doing this traditionally because 
at least we have something that you have uh, painted before on the previous layers to blend against but when it comes to digital painting there really isn't anything for you to blend against and you just have to pick the correct color each time I'm just picking a colors around it to um, do the wrinkles and because it's direct painting you have to really be mindful about your pressure so that you don't accidentally paint um, darker than you want to I think the base is almost done so <clears throat> I feel that the base is done and I'm just gonna re-blend and recolor anything that I feel is not correct so I feel that it needs more red so adding the red there and this would be a good time to do the cheeks so I think I have the base almost ready for the eyes so we are ready to move to the lips so for the lips I'm not gonna straight uh, put the um, pink on top of it because if I just use any color from the lip palette it might be the wrong value and that is what I do not want so right now we need to identify the value of the lips first but before that let me just color up the cheeks and I'm trying to make myself be very sensitive to the changes of um, color okay so right now um, let's try identify the color of the uh, lips so the best way to do it is to pick certain colors nearby and see if it works mm. I think this is quite close to it okay let's just use this as the base to get the tones correct first So let's go ahead and blend this up and then uh, get rid of the lines as quickly as possible so that we can see if the value is correct in comparison to the skin. We want to establish the uh, highlights first so that we can retain this drawing. Okay, we're just gonna quickly sketch the uh, using the dark red. We're gonna sketch the lines out. Okay, and a darker version of this uh, brown for for here, and we are ready to erase the lines. Okay. So, I'm gonna zoom out and see the values. The values look pretty correct. So, I think that we can go ahead and I think we can go ahead and um, give more details before we swap the color out. Okay, for the teeth, um, maybe we're just gonna put in the highlights first. Yeah, I think this is quite correct, the values. Once we feel that the values are fairly correct, um, 
we can then proceed to color up. It needs to be a lot more orange than this. It's a bit too strong, it's hard to control, so I'm just going to use this first. Let's try this again. In fact, let's just do a clean mask for this recoloring because I don't want it to bleed. Okay. And then to the right side is a, a bit more grey. So now I'm going to use the burn tool. We can then recolor the teeth back to back to like uh, blue or white using the blue tint or the grey tint. Okay, then we can use the dodge tool. Trying to get the right shade. Maybe just grey then. Something like that. Okay, let's clear off and give it a soft smudge to soften the edges again. And now we have a base for this, my, our lips already. So we're good to go. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna move the ear up because it seems to be oddly low. Okay. Okay, now that our base is done, we can then proceed uh, easier. So. First thing we're gonna do is work on the highlights because we haven't been doing that for the entire face. So I'm just gonna use the skin to mm, find out which color is correct. This seems to be okay. Maybe something a bit more pink. Yeah, this would be quite subtle, I think. Just some textures for the highlights. Okay, then we can switch to a lighter color. Maybe using tints for shadow. Something a bit more blue. Let's see. Okay, so now we have our highlights in place. Mm, we can. Should I finish the, the face first? Or do the hair first? Because the hair is going everywhere. Uh, I think we should finish the face first. So, back to the eyes. Yeah, so because this is a very natural face. And the beauty is in the... Um, in the eyes. Okay, we're gonna start by doing working on the eyes. Um, okay, let's add Nalia. Where is my? Okay, let's use the pupil base. So this is gonna be in this color yep and I'm just gonna give this a another pupil make sure it's the correct size okay then we're gonna duplicate this so that this is more visible and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna merge it lock it and we're going to give it like a black outline on the edge. And now, uh, another layer. Pupil center. 
gonna pick a green. And then I'm probably gonna lock it, change the color, wrong color there, still wrong, trying to get the color that I want. Yeah, this seems about right. Okay, mm, duplicate this. Bring this over, rotate it into place, and then match another layer. Last one, this one's gonna be more golden. Okay, duplicate this again. Bring it over here and match down, uh, erase the top part, match down, match down, match down, okay good. So ready already and we can work on the highlights. For the highlights this time, I'm just going to draw a mask. Okay, mm, new layer. Just going to put grey first. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to turn on add mode. And we'll erase and give this a soft edge. Duplicate this, bring it over, merge down, and merge down, and then now we can um, draw some eyelashes reflection. And then we can use um, Add a highlights brush to highlight the eight the eyes even more. Just gotta be careful like what color we are using. And if you want white we can just use grey. So we have the eyes done already. I'm just going to go ahead and put in the lashes. Okay, one eye is done. Okay, we can work on the lips now. First, let's uh, put in the right tone for the teeth. Okay, it's definitely too white. Yeah, this is actually okay. Just way too light. Okay, um... Wow, well, there's quite a bit of freckles. On the lips, huh? I think it's easier if I use the... Confetti. Just turn off the... Mode. Yeah, much easier this way. Okay, mm, change it back. Where's my lips brush? Okay. Okay, now we just left the uh, effects, which are the glitters and the freckles. So I'm going to go ahead and put the freckles in and see how everything looks like. Okay, before I proceed, I really can't stand it anymore. 
so I need to do the hair now because I really really can't stand it anymore the hair looks like a mess so I'm just gonna quickly do the hair using this very convenient hairbrush just gonna choose a like slightly darker color than this so that it will just blend right in okay just looking for a fade ah starting to look much better this portrait hair makes a lot of difference yo before i forget there we go so the quicker you are in matching uh, color chroma and value the better your life as an artist will be so you need to really hone this skill and it all just they are all just personal practice there's there's no shortcuts around it you just have to learn it and train yourself to be able to tell chroma values and hues apart okay i'm just gonna go slightly lighter for the last highlights and for the final um, hair effects I will have to use the strand brush instead so I'm just gonna use a sketch brush it's faster okay much regrets strand brush it is okay let's put in the highlights okay right now I think I finished but I feel that there's something wrong with my painting so I'm just gonna try and turn off everything and do a track maybe I'm just going to unify some of the tones a little bit so just going to play around here and see if it does anything or maybe just going to uh -huh, tone down everything yeah looks much better okay um let's try that again okay looks like this is unnecessary what i need is to fix the eyes aha uh -huh. looks like i fixed it all right somehow or other I think I know what's wrong. The teeth is what's wrong. First of all, I think we gotta remove the blue tint. Maybe? No, in fact, we have to warm it up slightly, I think. And then we gotta brighten it. Just gotta redo the uh, highlights. Trying to fix a drawing problem at this stage is really difficult. It's much easier to just bring this into Photoshop and liquefy it. Okay, looks good to me. Well, because we did not solve one problem at a time, so we have to fix like drawing problems. 
color problems, value problems, chroma problems all at once before we can call this painting done and that's how it is okay I think we can call this done I'm quite okay with it other than the fact that she looks like she's about to cry but I think that's part of the appeal don't you think? okay we can call this done Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and the color palettes that come together with it. So next video we're going to talk about the sketch brush and all the exercises that you can do with it along with another practice pack that you can download and use. Thank you so much for your support, have a good day and uh, enjoy my resources and see you next time, bye! Remember to subscribe.